Hello all, Rick here with a video looking at a different form of cannon today, one of the beefier armaments of Star Trek, the Phaser Cannon. Because, never mind. It came about as a variation of phaser technology that harkens back to the older designs used on ships around the 23rd century. At this time, phaser arrays were still fired from individual turrets or emitters, with the phaser strip not emerging until the early 24th century. The strips are these darkened lines you see around the saucer section of most vessels, and we'll have their own video covering their development, but eventually the standard emitter would take a back seat to this newer innovation. The Phaser Cannon is not to be confused with the Phase Cannon, which was a much earlier weapon from the 22nd century, while Phaser technology was still coming into its own. While the technology was still present during the mid-2300s, weapons development was not exactly a priority for Starfleet, with their greater focus on exploration. However, that would shift with the institution becoming aware of the Borg threat in 2365, and plans to modernise their fleet went underway. In order to support the Defiant project and other such ships, several new armaments were developed including the Quantum Torpedo, Ablative Armour and the Pulse Phaser Cannon. Unlike the Quantum Torpedoes however, which only required a bit of alteration to a torpedo launcher to accommodate them, the Phaser Cannon was generally only implemented on ships it was designed for, with the first class to have them fitted as standard being the Defiant. It is safe to say then, with the ease at which these developments were introduced, that such technology had been worked on behind the scenes within the Tokyo Starfleet Research and Development Branch, until it was accelerated for the Borg threat. So this cannon was designed to hit hard and with rapidity, averaging anywhere between 4-12 to 12 rounds per second. The premise was to develop something that could effectively hammer through shielding at close range, while the drawback was considerably less accuracy and power with range. Considering the Borg's tendency to get in close with a tractor beam when in combat this was not really an issue, plus the cannons were generally fitted alongside the more common strips or emitters for versatility. They work as a standard phaser, drawn on nadion particles, but instead of containing them into a stream and projecting them as a phaser beam, the emissions are encased in a magnetic field which forms into high energy orbs, which are then released towards the target. This is similar to how phasers have been seen to work before, and a common sight in other species' ships. Singular blasts instead of Starfleet's generally preferred sustained beams. The trick to the cannon is that this magnetically contained energy blast is repeated from multiple generators along the length of the cannon, creating a stream of these pulses. Basically, a machine gun phaser array. They are more effective against shielding and punching through a ship as they are harder to disperse than a phaser beam against deflectors and ablative armour, with the intent to overwhelm such systems. Such technology is implemented not just on starships, but as seen as mounted weapons on things like the Argo, although these would be less powerful as they drew on a far smaller energy source than a ship's reserves. The Pulse Phaser Cannons were not as widely produced because they demanded specialty components, such as completely flawless emitter crystals, rapid discharge electroplasma capacitors, and phaser coils uniquely calibrated for rapid fire. But when these implements are brought to bear, they prove their effectiveness especially during the Dominion War, and would later become fitted on ships beyond the Defiant class, especially those expected to see much combat such as the Prometheus and Gugarin. However, the Defiant had their cannons tied to their plasma conduit systems, almost doubling the yield at the cost of warp efficiency, which draws on 15% of the ship's energy supply when charged. In conjunction, the cannons had their own dedicated power cells, which would eventually be drained and needed frequent replacing. Suffice to say, other cannon fittings on ships may not have matched the Defiant class's teeth, when it came to the cannons as these were effectively that ship's specialty, if you like. The final point I will add is that they are still based on phaser technology and therefore have that intrinsic adaptability which proliferated phasers as Starfleet's go-to armament of choice, although they were not as easily convertible into the more tool-based functions as a beam was. 
That about covers the lore and the post phaser cannons. I've been Rick and thanks for watching. I'll see you again later for another lore video and until then, thanks again and goodbye.